I'm Katie Souza, and you're watching Healing Your Soul, Real Keys to the Miraculous. Last week, I started a new series on a very strange subject, and today I'm going to continue it. What am I talking about? Demonic serpents. Have you ever heard any sermons on the Great Commission? You know where Jesus commands us to preach the gospel to the world, cast out demons, and heal the sick? I believe we're all familiar with Mark 16, but here's the problem. There's a part of Jesus' call to all believers that has been left out of our preaching. It's where he says we've been commissioned to, quote, take up serpents. I never hear anyone talking about that. I think it's because we haven't known what to do with that verse, so we've just left it out of our teaching altogether. I believe many people have skipped over it because they've never understood what it means. After all, it sounds a little out there to take up serpents. That's why I'm so grateful that the Holy Spirit has revealed to me what he meant by that, so I can teach it to you. You're going to find out that the serpents Jesus was talking about are demonic spirits who are afflicting you and have attached themselves to anything and everything in your life. This involves these snakes putting physical sicknesses and diseases on your body, including big stuff like cancer, severe body pain, gout, intestinal and stomach disorders, skin diseases, bone-on-bone -bone arthritic issues, blindness and deafness. And believe it or not, these serpents can even squeeze your finances so you can't get out of debt, save your business, or have any level of prosperity. In today's show, let's go through the word together so you can really understand how to get rid of these demonic snakes. But first, let's start with some testimonies to raise up your faith to get your own miracle. For over 15 years, I suffered from a very painful form of arthritis called gout. And in September of 2014, Katie Souza came to our church and taught us on the revelation of the serpent in the soul. In an activation one night, we were soaking in the fire, and I saw a coral snake on my kidneys. And in the spirit, I grabbed that snake by the head, as Katie had been teaching us, and I threw it to dry and air and in places. And ever since that day, I have not suffered from a gout attack. And not only have I not suffered from a gout attack, but also any time I've had a twinge of any arthritic pain, I just soak in the fire. And so not only was I healed, but I also learned how to walk in a sustainable healing and to be freed from gout. I'm so grateful to God, to what he's done through Katie. I'm so grateful for her obedience to obey the Lord and get this revelation out there. From that and from her doing that and the Lord blessing me, I am healed from gout. What happened, Pat? Uh, I was diagnosed with breast cancer about two or three weeks ago and um, uh, with a pretty significant size mass, uh, which has been very uncomfortable and uh, painful actually and throbbing. And I have been praying for probably about the last six or seven days for the Lord to burn that cancer out. And um, I, I, I have to be very careful how I test that here, but I've been squ squishing myself every way that I can uh, in public with that and still be appropriate. And I can't feel a thing. So. I'm talking about how to get rid of demonic serpents. Behold, I have given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by in any means harm you. Jesus is also talking about demonic manifestations that come in the form of snakes and scorpions. Amen? See, this story, Jesus had just sent the 70 out. They're going out to do ministry work. Okay? They're going out to heal the sick, to preach the gospel, to drive out demons, to cleanse lepers. And then Jesus explains to these, to the 70, what some of the demons were that, that actually came off of people when they went out on their ministry trip. He said, behold, I've given you power to trample on snakes and scorpions. Those are some of the demons that submitted to you in my name. Demons can manifest in the form of serpents. Amen? What is Satan called in the book of Revelations? That dragon, the old serpent. Amen? So how do they get there? You, you have something in your soul that's in common with them. 
There's an unhealed place in our soul that allows these serpents to come in and attack us. Jesus talks about it in John 14, 30. He said, the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me that's in common with him, so he has no power over me. Did you hear what I said? He goes, he has nothing in me that's in common with him, so he has no power over me. Jesus had a perfect spirit. His spirit lives in us right now. Our spirit is perfect. But he also had a perfect soul. He was a man without sin. So he had no wounded areas inside of him. But we do. When we're born again, our soul has to go through a process of being healed. Because sin and trauma have wounded us. And our soul has to go through that process of coming into his image, into his likeness from glory to glory in a progressive manner. Amen. But we're going to deal with all that today. Repentance, forgiveness. That's the first step to healing the soul realm of those areas that are allowing demonic serpents to come in and give you cancer or gout or squeeze your money or make you get divorced. Amen? Repentance and forgiveness is the first step. What's the second step? It's the word dunamis. You have a tank full of dunamis power living inside of you. Now, if you go to Strong's Concordance or something else like that, you can look up the word dunamis and see what it means. It means excellence of soul. Remember what Jesus said, the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me that's in common with him, so he has no power over me. You see, you have stuff in your soul that's in common with him, and it's allowing these serpents and other demonic entities to attack you. Part of your generous gift today will help Katie bring hope and healing to thousands of prison inmates everywhere. When I was in prison, my friend in the cell next to me died of cancer. After that, God told me I was going to have a healing ministry because his people in prison are sick and he wants them well. Today when I go into prisons, I see extraordinary miracles of every kind. There is a real revival burning behind the walls, and with your help, the fire will spread to the world. As a thank you for your generous gift of $87 or more, Katie will send you Serpent and the Soul and Fire Soak. And now, Katie will also include her teaching and soak communion for your soul. Go online to katiesouza.tv with your gift today or call 1-800-789-7895. Did you know that Jesus gave us power to trample on serpents for a reason? Because these demonic spirits are attacking us and we don't even know it. They could be causing problems like cancer, drug addiction, Parkinson's, mental disorders, and countless other things. In this series, I show you how to drive these serpents out of hiding to receive your miracle. Call now, 1-800-789-7895 or go online to katiesouza.tv with your gift of $87 or more and Katie will thank you by sending you a copy of Serpent and the Soul and Fire Soak in addition to communion for your soul, teaching and soak. These are powerful weapons in your spiritual battle and your gift will minister to thousands of prisoners around the world. You gotta use that power to get healed in here so that you won't have anything in common with the enemy anymore. Now, when it comes to serpents, you gotta up the game a little bit. You see, dunamis comes in different forms. Dunamis also comes in the level of fire. Fire, I like to call it dunamis on crack. Fire. Dunamis manifests in different levels of intensity. And one of those levels is the level of fire. Let me prove it to you. Do you remember when Jesus, he's about to go up, he ascended up to be with the Father. This is in Luke 24, and he's talking to this, his disciples, and this is what he says. He says, behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but so tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power, everybody say dunamis, until you are endued with dunamis from on high. See, he's saying, okay, I want you guys to go up in the upper room. This is what happened on the day of Pentecost, right? And I want you to wait because some power is going to come down. And it's going to clothe you. It's going to do you. That power is. Well, that power is the word dunamis. What he's saying is the stuff that came down in the upper room was dunamis power. See, dunamis lives in here, but you can also get it to manifest out here. Amen? So they go to the upper room. And they sit there and they wait. And let's, let's listen to what happened. I'm reading from the Amplified, okay? It says this. And when the day of Pente Pentecost had fully come, they were all assembled together in one place. 
when suddenly there came a sound from heaven like the rushing of a violent tempest blast, and it filled the whole house in which they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues representing fire. Everybody say fire. Fire. Which were separated and distributed and which settled on each one of them. Okay, so remember, Jesus said power. Dunamis was coming down. That's what lives inside you now. But it comes in different levels. That day it came in the manifestation of fire. Dunamis fire. It's dunamis on crack. Right? Dunamis fire. Now what did that dunamis do? Listen. Verse 4 from the Amplified. And they were all filled, diffused throughout their souls with the Holy Spirit. Did you hear that? Dunamis fire came down. Landed on them, and where did it go? It went in here. It went in here. It diffused into their souls. What's it doing? It's burning up all the junk in your trunk. It's taking out all the stuff in here, the legal landing strips that the enemy uses to torment us. It diffused into their souls, and I know it did because there was proof, because everybody was changed. I mean, Peter was there. He's the guy that, you know, he denied the Lord three times, even started cursing, hid in the upper room for fear of the authorities, and even quit the ministry and went back fishing. But now what is he doing after the dunamis fire diffuses into his souls, diffuses into his soul? He preaches to 3,000 people and they all get saved. See, that's what, oh, oh man. That's what happens when dunamis comes. It diffuses into your soul. That fire diffuses into your soul, and it changes you. It heals you. Amen? It removes all the junk in your trunk that's making you act up, that's robbing you of your blessings, that's letting, that's letting demonic serpents and other entities attack you. Amen? What does it say in Malachi 3.2? It says, who can abide the day of his coming? Who shall stand when he appeareth? He is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. So he's saying fire does what? Refine you. It acts like soap. What does soap do? Clean you up, baby. Come on. It cleans you up. That's what dunamis fire does. It is a refiner's fire. It brings healing into your soul, man. That's why in Malachi 4, 1, it says, Behold, the day cometh that shall burn, everybody say fire, burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be as stubble. The Lord shall burn them up, and it will leave neither root nor branch. See, all that wicked stuff, all that proud stuff is going to be burned up with the fire. And when the fire comes, that dunamis fire, because remember what dunamis means, excellent of soul, excellent of soul. When that dunamis fire comes, it says it leaves neither root nor branch. You ever, like, had a problem, and you keep on trying to, like, stop yelling at your husband? Or stop, you know, eh, with your kids? Or stop being offended at your boss, but no matter how hard you try, you pull the top of the weed off, but it grows back? A couple months later, you've controlled yourself long, you know, as, as long as you can. And then all of a sudden, bleh, you vomit on everyone because the plant grew back off because you only ripped off the top of the weed. But when the dunamis fire comes, it goes, oh, God, are you with me? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? It takes out the root. It takes out the root. You're not going to want to act up anymore because you just won't want to. You won't have to make yourself behave. This fire, this dunamis, when it comes in the form of fire, is so intense that it comes directly against serpents. Listen to this story. Watch. I want to show it to you. Ready? Matthew 3. This is the story of John the Baptist. He was baptizing people in the Jordan. They were coming and confessing their sins, being baptized by him. But it says in verse 7 that when John saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Oh, you brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. So he's talking to some snake people. Why would he call human beings a brood of viper? 
Why would he call human beings brood of vipers? Obviously, he and Jesus, because Jesus called them the same thing, knew that these men were controlled by demonic spirits. Amen? S specifically, serpents. Now, what's the first thing John tells them to do? <laughs> Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Right there, he's saying the first thing that I just told you to do. What's the first thing I told you to do? Use the blood. Repent and forgive, right? And then what happens? You crush the head of the seed of the serpent because you're partaking of that moment. Jesus did it on the cross, amen? So he says, bear fruit worthy of repentance. Then he goes on, he says, now, The ax is laid to the root of the tree, and therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. <laughs> into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable... So he's telling you, that, oh my gosh, who's he talking to? Oh, you brood of vipers. He's talking to people that are infested with snakes and he's telling them how to get rid of them. Repent and sit in the fire. Repent, be baptized with the fire that comes from Jesus Christ. Repent and have the winnowing fork separate the chaff from the wheat. What's the chaff? That's the junk inside your soul so that Jesus can burn up that chaff with unquenchable fire. See that? Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see that? You get it? See, that's what the chaff is. Jesus comes and he baptizes us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Okay? Not just the Holy Spirit, but Holy Spirit and with fire. Just like in the upper room. And then that fire diffuses into your soul. And what does it do? He takes his winnowing fork and he separates the chaff from the wheat. The chaff is that junk, that wrong thinking, that wounded area, that thing in your soul that makes you get emotional when you shouldn't get emotional, that makes you think wrong when you shouldn't think wrong, that makes you make wrong decisions, okay? He separates the chaff, that stuff that is in your soul that's allowing the snakes to be there from the wheat, the good stuff. There's good stuff in there too. There's good stuff in your soul. Stuff where you are thinking right, you are doing right, you are feeling right. He separates those two and then he doesn't just separate separate them, he gets rid of the chaff by burning it up with fire. Unquenchable fire. Nothing can quench the fire. He wants to, oh God, he wants to burn up the chaff. He doesn't want you to live like this anymore. He doesn't want you to live like this anymore. He's going to separate the chaff from the wheat and burn it up with unquenchable fire, fire that no one can put out. And who is he talking to? Oh, you brood of vipers. <laughs> He's talking to snake people. Because <laughs> that's how you get rid of snakes. Amen? See, the fire will burn up that chaff. And then that legal landing strip that allowed them to be there will be gone and they'll have to leave. When's the last time you read the Great Commission? This is Mark 16. I want you to listen to what Jesus said in this classic scripture that is quoted by practically every believer in the planet. This is the Great Commission. Jesus said this. This is what he's commissioned every believer to do. Go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs, everybody say these signs, will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will take up serpents and they will drink anything deadly and it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Wow, did you hear that? This is the Great Commission, okay? This is Jesus. And he's telling us as believers what we're supposed to do, right? We're supposed to go out and preach the gospel to everyone in the world, to every creature. Right? We're supposed to have signs following us. We're supposed to lay hands on the sick and they will get well. We're supposed to deliver people of demons. And we're also supposed to quote, take up serpents. That's actually in 
the Great Commission, but I never hear anybody talking about it. What does that mean to, to take up a serpent? The word take up there is the Greek word iro, and it means this, to take off or away what is attached to anything. To take off and away what is attached to anything. We're supposed to take up serpents. We're supposed to take them off of what they are attached to. And since I was young, I would get this, this thing, uh, Shizan or something that basically would grow, would get huge and would fold over and they would have to literally cut it open, peel it out. I got, have scars all over my eyes. Wow. They told me this something, you know, that just happens to certain people, you're always gonna have it. So you had that since you were a child? As a child, so every few years, I would have to go to the doctor, be awake, they'd put this thing on my face. I'd see the scalpel come in, slice, scoop it out, get rid of it. That's enough to traumatize anyone, not mention a child, don't you yeah, think? Complete trauma. So I know right away when I would feel it, it would be this little bump, and then it gets bigger and bigger, folds over, disgusting looking. So we went to a conference, I got the CDs, at one point, I was driving, and it was about the snakes. And I started seeing in the spirit, I saw this thing slithering in my eye, but I just saw, kind of like when a snake goes like this, you just see the back of it and just different parts of it. And it would just keep doing it. And in the background, you're yelling fire, you know, and explaining it. Go to a stop sign, and it, I had blurred vision out of that eye, too. That's what happens, and it forms. It was this hard ball. So all of a sudden, I'm seeing all that, and then I see the head come out and come to come at me. I grabbed the head, threw it, but when I pulled it, it was still there. I could see it. So I'm using my other hand, and I'm pulling it out, and it was like a huge boa constrictor. So it was super long when you grabbed it with the wand. Yeah, I pulled full length and it was still coming out. So I grabbed the other, oh my God. threw it down, started screaming fire, going to the abyss, never come back. And then I look up and I see people looking at me and I'm like, hey. <laughs> and then I put, I put my hand. Just removing the snake, stand by, it's all good. <laughs> so the pain instantly was removed. I put my finger up on my eye and the solid thing was gone. It was like the pocket was completely removed. And completely, completely gone. Come on, that's amazing. Father, I thank you. I thank you that this room is full of your angels, that your word, you said in Jeremiah 23, that your word, is it not like fire, like a hammer that breaks rock to pieces? I decree as the word has gone forth, fire has been released. As the word has gone forth, the ministers of fire, your fiery angels have gone to work because they, the Bible says that they heed the word of the Lord and they're able to go anywhere, even into our television audience and help them. That ministering angels are heeding to your word as I've spoken your word. And they've gone to release fire into this auditorium, fire into the homes of people that are watching this broadcast. And that as I speak the word, it says, is not my word like a fire? Jeremiah 23, and like a hammer that breaks rocks and pieces, that as I've been releasing the word, it is fire and it's breaking the rocks in pieces. It's removing the chaff in the name of Jesus. I decree right now, fire is diffusing in your soul. Say it when they say fire. It's dunamis. I'm excellent of soul. That fire is diffusing into my soul. It's burning up the chaff inside me. Jesus is baptizing me with a whole new level of fire inside and outside. He's separating the chaff from the wheat and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. I decree everything in me is being coated by the blood of Jesus and the fiery presence of God it is not my fire, a refiner's fire. It's like fuller's soap. It leaves neither root nor branch. 
Wow, soaking in fire is a really powerful way to get rid of these snakes. I just showed you a brief glimpse into how we activate into God's cleansing fire at our live events. But it's also how I move into healing and deliverance at home in my own private time. I personally do the same process, but I just spend more time at it. Soaking in the fire is easy. You just spend concentrated time focusing on scriptures about the fire of God or worship to one of your favorite fire songs that sings about the fire of God. I encourage you to sing along with your favorite fire song in your car or tonight before you go to bed or even play it on repeat as you sleep. You'll be shocked at how this simple process will drive serpents out of your life and bring miracles of every kind. Part of your generous gift today will help Katie bring hope and healing to thousands of prison inmates everywhere. When I was in prison, my friend in the cell next to me died of cancer. After that, God told me I was going to have a healing ministry because his people in prison are sick and he wants them well. Today when I go into prisons, I see extraordinary miracles of every kind. There is a real revival burning behind the walls and with your help, the fire will spread to the world. As a thank you for your generous gift of $87 or more, Katie will send you Serpent and the Soul and Fire Soak. And now Katie will also include her teaching and soak communion for your soul. Go online to katiesouza.tv with your gift today or call 1-800-789-7895. Did you know that Jesus gave us power to trample on serpents for a reason? Because these demonic spirits are attacking us and we don't even know it. They could be causing problems like cancer, drug addiction, Parkinson's, mental disorders, and countless other things. In this series, I show you how to drive these serpents out of hiding to receive your miracle. Call now, 1-800-789-7895 or go online to katiesouza.tv with your gift of $87 or more and Katie will thank you by sending you a copy of Serpent and the Soul and Fire Soak in addition to communion for your soul, teaching and soak. These are powerful weapons in your spiritual battle and your gift will minister to thousands of prisoners around the world. Think about this. Why would this part of the Great Commission, one of the most well-known scriptures in the Bible, go unnoticed or even unpreached for so long? Remember what I said, snakes are masters of camouflage. They don't want to be found out. They want to remain undetected so they can continue causing damage and ruining your life. Well, they can't hide now that we know they're there. We've got the fire of God and we're going to use it. You should tune in next week because I'm going to make sure you get totally free.